This is going to be Bible references on tribulation and answering the question, do Christians go through the tribulation? Uh, we have used the word tribulation so much to describe that time in the future, which the book of Revelation talks about, that many people think it is the actual title of that future time period to come. But if you look at Matthew 24, 29 more closely, you will see it isn't a title, but rather more of a description of that future time. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, notice where it says, Of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So see how it says, Of those days. So there is going to be tribulation in those days. It didn't say immediately after the tribulation shall the sun be darkened. By the Holy Spirit adding of those days to the verse, it shows that tribulation isn't the title of that future time period. And to make tribulation the title, you have to remove of those days. And it would read immediately after the tribulation shall the sun be darkened. But it doesn't remove those words if you've got a King James Bible. And I don't even know if the other Bibles remove them. The false Bibles. And then Matthew 24, 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. It says there shall be great tribulation. But as you can see, it's not a title. It's a description. Uh, Mark 13, 24 says, But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Even again here in Mark it says, In those days after that tribulation. And then in John 16, 33 it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Notice how Jesus tells them here in John 16, 33, they will have tribulation. It isn't a title, it's just something they're going to face. And many will use verses in the Pauline epistles about tribulation to prove that we are going through that future time period. But Romans 5, 3 says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So, Paul is glorying in tribulations. Is he going through the book of Revelation, the events way back then when he, when Romans was being written? Paul lets us know that Christians go through tribulations in their daily life. He isn't referring to going through that horrible time period in the future that many refer to as the great tribulation. And then Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. 2 Corinthians 7, 4 says, Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Was Paul going through the events of the book of Revelation back then? No, he couldn't have been because it hasn't taken place yet. Just because Paul talks about us facing tribulation doesn't mean we will be here for any part of the book of Revelation. We have tribulation in our daily life, especially if you are suffering for Jesus Christ, witnessing and trying to live right. In the book of Revelation, it talks, us, talks about the rapture in Revelation chapter 4. It talks about us coming back with Jesus Christ. It talks a little about the judgment seat of Christ, but we're not going to be here during Revelation chapter 9 where the locusts are coming out of the bottomless pit. We're not going to be here during all that stuff. And just because Paul talks about us having tribulation doesn't mean we're going through all of the horrible events in the book of Revelation. And then 1 Thessalonians 3, 4 says, For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and you know. Notice he said, even as it came to pass. Has the tribulation already passed? No, he's referring to Christians suffering tribulation in their Christian lives. 
2 Corinthians 1.4, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Paul and the Corinthians were going through tribulation then. You could be going through tribulation right now in your life. When Satan is attacking you or in your daily life and you're having trouble, you're going through tribulation as a Christian and that happens to us often. Judges 10.14, go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Were they going through the tribulation of the, the events in the book of Revelation back in the book of Judges? The only one who can deliver us in all our tribulation is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one we should turn to in times of trouble. And saints in the tribulation will also have to get comfort from the Lord and by reading his word, especially the book of Job's and Psalms. And Job will be the best example for them to have patience in their tribulation. 1 Samuel 26, 24 says, And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Was David going through the events of Revelation back in 1 Samuel? No, he wasn't. But he also went through tribulation, just like God's people do in any age. And then Mark, Matthew thirteen twenty one says, Yet hath he not, not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Many will quit reading the Bible and trying to do right because tribulation or persecution comes. When the events of the book of Revelation take place, the saints are going to have to be enduring a lot of per tribulation and persecution. They're going to be hated and they're going to die as a martyr. If they don't take the mark, if they're caught, if the tribulation isn't really the title of that future time, then what is the title? I believe the title of that future time is in Jeremiah 30 and verse 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And many people call it Daniel's 70th week because of Daniel 9.24. I don't have a problem with people calling the time of Jacob's trouble the tribulation, but many take it too far and use the Pauline epistles where Paul talks about Christians going through tribulation, and they will use that to say Christians are going through all of the events in the book of Revelation. But if you be honest and believe the words as they are written, you can plainly see that we aren't going through that time, and Paul is referring to tribulation currently in our daily lives because we're suffering for Jesus Christ. But if you want to be saved and be caught out of here in the rapture before that real time of tribulation comes, then you need to believe the gospel. And you can find the gospel in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is this. Jesus died. He died for you, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And then how did he die? Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. The book of Acts talks about how he purchased us with his own blood. He died by shedding his blood. And why did he have to die? He had to die because we are sinners. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. All our righteousness are as filthy rags. If we want to be saved, we're going to have to believe the gospel. We don't just believe that Jesus existed in history and just believe that he died. We need to believe that he died for us and place our faith in that to get us to heaven and quit relying on our own self-righteous works. Repentance is turning from your own self-righteousness, putting your trust in the gospel, and then you get the righteousness of Jesus Christ in return for doing that. And that's the only way you can be saved and go to heaven. Because Jesus Christ is the only righteous man who ever lived. He's the perfect sacrifice. 
No good works that we do can ever merit salvation. We can't do good enough. We need a perfect person, and we need his record to be applied to our record. And that's what happens when you believe the gospel, and that's called imputed righteousness. God imputes the righteousness of Jesus Christ to your record. So then after that, when God sees you, he sees Jesus Christ, the perfect record of Jesus Christ. But if you'd like to be saved, believe the gospel. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.